Welcome to the Certified Piedmontese Beef North America Championships for Ironman here in beautiful Des Moines, Iowa. I'm sorry to say we have to do another athlete briefing right now, so bear with me. If I did an athlete briefing, I'd say get your wetsuit, get your cap, get your goggles, get in the water, swim, get out, get your bike shoes on, put your helmet on, ride, and then get off, run, put your shoes on, crawl, Walk, run, and just get to the finish line. How's that sound for an athlete movie? So they said it in this great state that if you build it, they will come. We put together an Ironman, we built it, and here you are, the inaugural Ironman Wisconsin. I just absolutely love it. I want, I want. I said Wisconsin. Yes. Oh my gosh. Where'd that come from? We're paying attention. I know. You know, it's like, it's like we laugh at Mick Jagger when he goes, Welcome to Detroit, and he's in Cleveland, you know. <laughs> so welcome to Des Moines. I love first year races because the community is just so gobsmacked. That's an Australian term. Gobsmacked about, about all these athletes in their town. What they don't know is what gonna, they're going to see at the finish line. So each and every one of you are going to fill their dreams. This is not the field of dreams. This is the course of dreams today, okay? We're going to have some fun tonight. Tonight's always about relaxing you, having you breathe, and just, just laughing and have some fun. So before I introduce the people I'm going to bring on stage, let's take a look at the results from the first question. I hope you uh, took a picture of the QR code because we're going to do this as we go through the ceremony. I'll give you just a few moments, if you haven't done that already. Uh, you go to the web page where you'll be able to answer some of the questions we have for you tonight, okay? So, where's the results? Are they on screen yet for the first question? What was that? Have you ever done an Ironman before? Yes, no, this will be my first. 47%, per, I love that. No, and if you wear a panda suit, I'll call you an Ironman twice. How's that? So that's the first result, I love it. When we go through school and you go to college and you get a degree, you never really sign up for any classes that say, be a race director. It's just not out there. They learn while they're working. Your race director here in Des Moines has uh, put hours and hours in to make sure this course is out there for you, perfect. The nutrition's going to be out there, and you're going to be safe. Let's welcome your race director, everybody, Jack, Jake Jazz. Jake, where are you at? Maybe he's out there working. All right, if I see him, we'll bring him up a little bit later. We can never, ever put a race of this magnitude on without the support of the community because we just invade everything and we take up the roads, we shut down traffic and all that good stuff. And it uh, doesn't happen without the support of the City Fathers. It's now my pleasure to bring up on stage to speak with you this evening, the Mayor of the great city of Des Moines, Mayor Frank County. I gotta tell you, it's, it's great to see everybody here, all excited about this great event. I've gotta start by telling you, I'm, I'm a full swimmer. I don't get biking and swimming and doing all that thing one after another. I thought we'd just get in the pool, we call it a day, and that's the end of that. But holy smokes, my hat's off to everybody and all the work that, uh, that you have done to get in shape and all of those that are here to support those competitors, 
I've got to tell you my hats off to you. And uh, uh, I have watched this event. I've watched it grow. It looks like we're going to get a new microphone. We got people here that can fix anything. We're gonna stick this in there too. Okay, all right. Can we hear it now? Yeah. We're good. All right. Well, at any rate, good afternoon, good evening, whatever it is. We'll start all over. But. Uh, everyone and thanks for being out in our beautiful city uh, this weekend. Listening to the motorcycles go by, isn't it? Uh, that's what you've been waiting for, isn't it? <laughs> uh, as Mayor of Des Moines, it's our privilege to host this event and all the families. And how are we doing? <laughs> I gotta tell you, you might as well stay right here. Don't you? <laughs> You know, Ironman is one of the most daunting athletic challenges on the planet, and roughly 1,500 of you on Sunday will compete at Grays Lake, at the Waterworks Park, and through the suburbs, and back into downtown Des Moines. Your stamina and limits will be tested in ways that are unimaginable for many of us, especially a guy that was just a swimmer, uh, yet inspiring to all of us, and for that, you are to be commended, and I gotta tell you, my heart and soul goes out to each and every one of you. We should also commend and thank the organizers of this year's Ironman North America Championship. Uh, it is a phenomenal undertaking that can only be successful through the passion for the sport, a dedication to hard work and pride in our communities. And those efforts were rightfully rewarded yesterday and the announcement that the Ironman event in Des Moines will be extended for three more years. So congratulations to everybody that helped make that happen. And finally, I want to thank all the volunteers. Hundreds of you will devote so much of your time and energy to help make this year's Ironman another success in our city without your tireless efforts, this weekend simply wouldn't happen. Your commitment to this event in our community serves as a welcoming red carpet to our guests. For that, we are all grateful. And let's give all those volunteers a big, big hand. Now I've got to tell you, I was getting so excited to listen to the Who back there that that um, I I remember them. I remember the last time they were in Des Moines too. So let's hope we get some uh, we get more Who back. But the Who is you for this weekend. Thank you all for being here, and best of luck to everybody in this competition. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Sorry about the little technical difficulties. If you can't hear me, something's wrong. <laughs> well, you've heard me say the name quite a few times, and I'll say it a lot on race day, Certified Piedmontese Beef. Said it in Tulsa, saying it here in Des Moines. They are a tremendous title sponsor. They're going to have all kinds of goodies for you out on the course. They're going to have, uh, I think, hot dogs and hamburgers for you at the finish line. So thank you very much to Certified Piedmontese. It is going to be a long day, okay? We know that. Heck, you put in long training days, long sleepless nights, <laughs> you put in early mornings. You, you've done what you had to do to sacrifice to even be sitting here tonight. Well, sometimes by the time you reach the finish line, you'll have forgotten how to smile. We don't want that for you. We want you to look great in those uh, photos at the end. So we put something together for you to think about 
while you're out there, because I guarantee you this video will make you smile. Check it out. So you want to be an Iron Man? So, you want to be an Iron Man. It's pretty simple, really. All you have to do is see Iron Man, search Iron Man, wrong Iron Man, get distracted. That's the right one. Get inspired. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. Sign up. Regret it immediately. I have sinned. Research deferral options. Resign yourself to training. Tell your friends. I happen to be training for a triathlon right now. So, doing a lot of running and uh, cycling, swimming. Well, you know all about that. <laughs> no, actually, I don't. I play real sports. I'm trying to be the best at exercising. <laughs> Go for a run. Absolutely hate it. No! God, please, no! 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 Buy a bike. Buy clipless pedals. Clip in for the first time. Fall over. Get back up. Go for a ride. Fall in love. Consider buying a second bike. What will you tell your spouse? I have let you down. Buy a second bike anyway. Get yelled at. Cheap flying, no good rocket. Go run again. Hate it less. Slowly get faster. Start to love it. Continue biking and running. Decide to start early morning workouts. Wake up at 4.30 a.m. Snooze. Wake up at 5 a.m. Snooze. Wake up at 5.30 a.m. Snooze. Decide to try again tomorrow. Start working on nutrition. Months pass, and you're feeling strong. You're an animal. No one can stop you. Have time. There has never been a better triathlete. You are amazing. Oh, crap. You forgot to swim. Get a gym membership. Get up early. You've been swimming since you were a kid. No big deal. Forget how to swim. Panic. Tell yourself that maybe the backstroke will be fast enough. Go for a ride to cheer yourself up. Realize your bike isn't quite as great as it used to be. Buy a third bike. More yelling. Biking is fun again. Running rocks. You have taught yourself to swim again. You're well on your way. Now it's here. Race week. The entire purpose for the last several months of your life. You have dedicated time, energy, money, a lot of money. And you have poured out your life in pursuit of this thing called Iron Man. You have pictured that finish line in your head. You have studied the course. You are ready. You just have to remember to stay calm. Follow your plan. Slow down on race day and enjoy what you are doing. You've put in the train. You just have to pick up your medal at the finish line. Remember to smile. Thank the people who helped you get here. Thank as many volunteers as you can. Thank every single one you see. Read the signs along the course. Keep in mind the words of the sport. Anything is possible. And know that in a few short hours, you will be an Iron Man. Yeah! Ah, uh, just think about that. The one I love is the guy diving right into that mud pit head first. So, uh, think about that on race day and it'll just make you laugh. On the uh, stat side, the men, we have 74.55% of the field are male and 25.23% are female. That's a good female ratio, I love that. And then, I'm gonna do a little, I'm gonna give something away, I'm gonna give a mug away. But what you gotta do is if, if you've done two or more Ironman, stand on up. Stand up if you've done two or more. Yeah, look at that, veterans. Now, remain standing if you've done five or more. Oh, if you sat down, look at the front up here that's packed. Yeah. Remain standing if you've done ten or more Ironman. Whoa. Remain standing if you've done 15 or more. There, there, there. Look at this. You, you guys, did you come together? Remain standing if you've done 20 or more. Oh, three of them sat down. Anybody back there that are standing, put your hands up in the air so I know. All right, 25 or more, remain standing. Oh, one went down, they went down. He's still waving, you're still up. I got three up here. 
One there. 30 or more remain standing. Whoa. I, I, I'm sorry for this first timers. They're sitting there going, what the heck? I, I feel like I'm nothing. No, you, don't worry. 35 or more remain standing. Come on. 40 or more. Oh, there's one down. 45 or more. I got two up. Anybody back there? Well, I know how many he's done in the red. I don't know how many she's done. 50 or more? 50 what? Oh, number 49 right there. I love that. Standing. Mr. Luis Alvarez from Mexico. On Sunday, he'll be out there with you doing his 185th Ironman. 185. 189? Oh, 188? How come you change it every race I see it? Okay, 188. Luis has done an Ironman anywhere there's been an Ironman in the world. He's climbed the seven peaks of the world, Mount Everest. One of the most amazing individuals that we know, Luis Alvarez. And for all that, you get a coffee mug. <laughs> you can never have enough coffee mug. Oh, that's great. His name is Alan Lucas. He's from Indiana. I, I hope he's here. I, I wasn't able to get a hold of him. He's the oldest competitor in the race. 82 years young. Alan, are you here? Alan? There he is! All right, Alan, stand up! 82! Alan, we got something for you, so hang on. And our oldest female competitor, she's 72 years old from Colorado, Sandy Weeby. Sandy? There's Sandy over there! So you've got some Lululemon gear coming. I bet you Lululemon, when they designed their gear, didn't think about an 82 and 72 year old, but they don't care. They're as young as we are, aren't they? Yeah, look at that. So if Alan and Sandy come in before you at the finish line and I bring you in, I won't tell anybody. Okay, our youngest. He's just 19 years old from Texas, Colin Angel. Colin, are you here? 19? No, Colin? 19, I got jeans older than that. Uh, Sarah. Sawaya. Yeah, Sawaya from Mississippi. She's 20 years old. Sarah? There's Sarah. Sarah, you get a prize. You'll, you'll get a back. Wait, wait right here. Right, here. right there. There you go. Hey, 20 years old, you get a free shirt. Our oldest age group. This is the kind of the first time. You know, I, I can't remember. Our uh, largest age group, I should say, is the men 50 to 54 at 170 of you. Usually it's like 40, 44, 35, 39. So 50 to 54 year olds, you're out there in force. On the women's side, it's the women 40 to 44 with 62 entrants. So as you've heard me say it before, there's 45 slots for Kona in October. If you're in those age groups, <laughs> good luck. <laughs> so we have giveaway VIP. Oh, all right. From those age groups, 50 to 54, 40 to 44, raise your hand if you're in those age groups. Who is here with their partner? All right, you got a prize over here. You're here with your partner. You're here with your partner, okay. I, I could say Sherpas, you know. Partner, partner, okay, we got five right here, Eddie. How many you got? Yeah, one right here. One down here at the far left, my left. We got one back there, you got VIP backpacks right down the middle aisle. There you go. I don't know if we got them all, I got... 
while, while he's doing that, for the last five years, I've had the honor of being the ambassador captain for the Iron Man Foundation. The Iron Man Foundation gives back money in every community that we have an event in. So anytime you donate to ironmanfoundation.org, it goes straight back into the community. As a matter of fact, since 2003, the Iron Man Foundation has raised over $55 million. I've seen swimming pools built. I've seen us rebuild houses in hurricane uh, areas. I've seen us put children in school and keep them in there until their eighth grade year. I've seen it go to the reservation in Arizona, do things out there that's amazing. So if any of you are racing on behalf of the Iron Man Foundation, any of you out there, foundation athletes, I know there's a few in the race. Thank you very much for everything that you do. <laughs> okay, what we did was we ran around the village here. Some of you were interviewed, and we asked about you know very inexperienced, very experiences you had. Uh, what we were able to catch up with you and what we asked everybody was who's your hero who's your hero so let's take a look at what your fellow athletes had to say oh my goodness my hero that's actually a hard one um, I think I instantly go to my parents uh, my uh, mom and dad were both really active and instilled in me a love of being outdoors and biking, swimming, running uh, all the time. Um, my mom actually is going to be at the race and watching me uh, compete on Sunday too. I think uh, Rainy, Miranda Capri, yeah. definitely my hero. I think just with that, like so much that she has in her life and she's still awesome racer, she does so great. <laughs> Uh, my hero is actually Michael Phelps. Um, just love his swimming capabilities. Uh, he really inspired me to continue swimming throughout college, and now here I am at an Ironman event, my first one. So who's your hero? My mama. Mama's the goat, man. My hero is my dad. She always has been, always will be. My wife for doing her races and getting through all her injuries. Nice. <laughs> that was very good. That surprised me a lot. <laughs> My dad. Yeah, why? Because he helped me become who I am, and I'm happy with myself. Uh, Heather Jackson. I really like paying attention to Heather and what she's doing, and she's crossed over into gravel, and she's just a great athlete all around. Good picture. Dug in. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Because. He's my biggest support system. He's an amazing athlete, and we love to travel the world together, and we're trying to knock out as many Ironmans as we can. My hero? Well, Jill is my hero, because... Because she always has fun, and I never have fun. And I wish I could have fun the way she does. My hero is uh, probably my high school basketball coach. Um, he, you know, along with my parents, instilled a lot of great hardworking abilities on how I approach the world and all the things that I do. Well, I, I grew up uh, as a distance runner in Williamsburg, Iowa. I always wanted to be C. Prefontaine, so I got the mustache and long hair now. So I guess I'll go with that for my answer, yeah. My hero? Find my wife because she puts up with me. <laughs> <laughs> my hero, I'd have to say, is my grandfather. Yeah, wow. yeah. I, he just does the, uh, he exuded what it was supposed to be like to be human. Making mistakes, doing good, always do your best for it. My dad, and my mom, so I have two, I'm gonna have to cheat. Uh, my dad is like commitment, um, and my mom is just like hardworking and passionate, so it has to be the combination of both of them. My hero would be my grandpa, he would have been a hundred years old today, and he's from Iowa, and that's why I'm here. My wife, my kids, and my grandkids, my family. But after that, it's each and every one that comes across the Ironman finish line. You are my heroes. 
I know your backstories are filled with tough times and good times, but I also know when you get to the finish line, you become someone you didn't think you could become. Ace Groupers, you will always be my hero. I've got a hero I'm going to bring up on stage right now. I was introduced to her story not too long ago. As you know, I like reading the bios and going through stories and yeah, you know, put them in put them in a book <laughs> and maybe another. But this one really touched me because I know a lot of times when we go into an Ironman race and there's things that are outside of our control, like the weather. And this was a race in Wisconsin that she did in 2018. 19, 2019, and the water in Lake Monona was, maybe that's why I have Wisconsin on my head. The water in Lake Monona looked like the ocean. It was just, oh my gosh. Anyway, she got out of the water, got on the bike, and then uh, I'm gonna let her continue the story there. Let's bring her up on stage. Come on, Galen, you got it, it's all yours. This is Galen Schultz, she's 27 years old, from Minnetonka, Minnesota. I love saying Minnetonka, Minnesota. Minnetonka, Minnesota, it does work. And you got off the, out of the water in Wisconsin. She got on her bike, she was riding, she got out to uh, personal needs, we call it personal needs now, which is about 60, 70 miles into the bike in, in Wisconsin. And then why don't you pick it up from there what happened because you didn't want to continue? Oh yeah, I was I was done and I pull into um, the personal needs station and I you know, tip off my bike and I go up to a volunteer and I said, I'm done, it's not my day, please just, just take me out of the race, like tell an official, get my family, I'm done. And, uh, and he kind of looks at me and he nods and he's like, okay, okay. And, are you sure? And I said, yeah. And he turns to walk away, but then he pauses. And he comes right back to me and says, how about this? And he tells me a story of when he completed his Ironman at Madison and, and says, you know what? I bet you can do one more mile. He said, just get back on your bike and go surprise yourself. And I did, and I finished the race and became an Ironman that day, largely due to that. <laughs> And I love that because when he said those three simple words of go surprise yourself, and I know they're going to resonate out there, you, you thought about that all the time. Then you thought about it during a tough recovery period. She's, Galen's an ICU nurse, and only a week or so after the race, she had a patient uh, attacker. She had some brain damage. She couldn't speak very well. She went through two years of hard recovery, and those two years, those words kept coming back to you? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, every day when you'd wake up and, and I'd think, okay, you know, this, this is the day I just can't do it. You know, it's, it's just kind of thinking about what he told me, one more mile. I said, okay, one more day, you know, and I had my family there telling me that every day, reminding myself, you're an Iron Man, go surprise yourself, and so I just took just like I took one mile, I took one day at a time. And now I'm back here on the stage. So. And mom and dad and family are down here. Uh, the other part of that, which I really adore, the part of the story, is that you didn't want the bad thing that happened in your life to define you. Tell us about that. Yeah, I just kind of refused to accept that it was just a bad thing that happened to me and was going to happen to me. And I, you know, had this traumatic brain injury and I was just going to be that forever. You know, I, I was never going to get better. And there were times when I was, you know, I was told, okay, you, you can't walk around your apartment really because my heart rate was getting too high and all sorts of things. And, and so I thought, you know, okay, this is it for me. This is my life now. And, uh, and yeah, just one day at a time and just kept telling myself and just kept trying to not let it define me. And then that became so intertwined with having completed my Ironman so close to when I got my injury that, you know, doing another one just became the goal. It became, you know, a driving factor in me 
pushing every single day and physical therapy, everything, you know, just, yeah, and now I'm, I feel like if I can get to the finish line on Sunday, then I have, you know, I've come all the way. So there's only up from there. You have come all the way. And David, you're not letting it define you. Uh, you're an Iron Man in Wisconsin, and I have no doubt that she's going to be with you, everybody, finishing on Sunday. You're going to be an Iron Man again. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Good luck to everybody out there, too. Can't wait to see you all. <laughs> and Galen's back in the ICU working as a nurse. She's one of our healthcare workers. You are my hero. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's all right. I'll just use this one. I'm going to bring a gentleman up on stage that I've called in to a lot of finish lines. I've called him in as a champion in Mont Blanc in 2014. That's when we had the Ironman North America Championships there, and he won the race. And I would always say, he's from Des Moines, Iowa. And you know, all the pro triathletes, they can be out of Bend or Boulder or Frankfurt or, you know, they go all these exotic places. But he was born and raised here. He built his, his bike business here. He's an engineer, multi-time Ironman champion, and he's going to come up and talk to you, the best from Des Moines, T.J. Tullickson, everyone. I'm not going to, I'm not going to do much of an interview, I just, I just am very excited you're here, I've always been excited about you being at a race, uh, you're still involved with the business, but to have an Iron Man in your hometown has to be an absolute thrill. It really is. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, we've been working on getting this race here for years, and it's finally here. And I couldn't be more excited. I raced my last professional race last year at the 70.3. Uh, I retired from professional racing. I still I did an Olympic distance race in Clear Lake, Iowa, two weeks ago, but. Uh, so I still love it. It's just it's a lifestyle for me, and I hope it is forever. Uh, but I'm here. Uh, I own my business just down the street on Seventh Street and uh, Diamond Bikes. I'm a part of this community. Having this event here means everything to me. And just to show how much I love this, I am an aid station captain tomorrow. I'll be captaining aid station number four on the run. Uh, you'll see me in these shirts. Our crew will be wearing these shirts. Uh, and it's really appropriate because I've gone through over 25 Ironmans in my pro career where I took water and Gatorade and, and gels from volunteers. And so it's only appropriate that now I get to stand on the other side and hand all of you Gatorade, water, and gel. And I'll be out there. It'll be a big party. We'll be blasting loud music, pump it up. Uh, I hope to encourage as many of you as possible to get through those dark spots, make it become an Iron Man, and listen to this guy call you in and say those magic words. So thank you very much. I'm super pumped about having this race, even more excited that we've got this for three more years in town. So uh, let's do it. Let's become an Iron Man. Well, I got to say, though, TJ. You look like you could jump in a race and do this thing. My God, you, you, you could win your own race in Des Moines. Uh, I, I, I could maybe finish the race. I'm not quite in pro-level shape right now. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lifestyle. I love this, so I'll keep at it. Well, great having you here, DJ. We can't wait. I wish I could go out to the four and see that. Let me go out there. I, we'll hear you from here. DJ Tillotson, everyone. By the way, we do, there we go, okay. By the way, we do have, uh, since it is the North American Championship, some fantastic pros. On the men's side, we've got Tim O'Donnell, second place finisher in Kona a few years back. Who else, well, Matt Russell uh, is in the race. Matt Hansen, yeah, Stephen uh, 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 Kilshaw is in the race. On the women's side, Sky Monch, who just had a great race in, in uh, St. George. Lindsey Corbin who has more professional 
races for a female than any female out there. We've got Jenna Nett and Kelly Phil now, so it's going to be one heck of a uh, professional race for the men and the women. Okay, I got a question here. Here we go. We've got another question of would you rather. This is a good one. So you get ready to vote. And I'm not going to look at the results. I'm going to try to guess what you voted. Would you rather do the whole race wearing your wetsuit or the whole race in your bike shoes, including the swim? Hurry up, answer it, put it in. Would you rather do the whole race in your wetsuit or with your bike shoes on? Okay, I'm not even looking at it. Tell me when they're done. You should vote before you look, you know, don't be swayed. I know what I do. Okay, are we done? Alright. I'm guessing you said you do the whole race in your bike shoes. No? The larger percentage was do your whole race in your wetsuit? What are you, going to go out there and blow up with heat? Are you kidding me? What percentage? 64%. You guys are crazy. 36% in your bike shoes. I've seen someone run the marathon course in their bike shoes. That's why. Because they forgot their... Long story. All right, 65%. By the way, if you do the whole race in your bike suit on Sunday, and I'm sorry, in your wetsuit on Sunday, we may give you a free entry. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Somebody will be out there. Look at Mike. All right, the next question, would you rather... <laughs> everyone has to use the same porta potty in transition, or you can go house to house and knock on people's doors. <laughs> what the heck, I do that on training rides. I wonder how skewed this is going to be. The same portal or go house to house. I'm saying it's going house to house. Is it like over 80%? 90%. All right. By the way, that house is out on the course. Do not go to the front door. All right. Here's one that I got wrong in Tulsa. Would you rather be better at swimming, riding, or running? Put it in, quick. What would you rather be better at, swimming, riding, or running? Uh, where's it going? Is it one of them skewing higher? Just a little? All right, I'd want to be better at swimming, but I got a feeling since we spend more time on the bike, you said riding. What do you mean you want to be a better runner? Most of you walk anyway. <laughs> That's right? All right, all right, now I get it. Now I get it, all right. It was, rather, it was uh, riding in, in uh, Tulsa. That was the number one run. All right, you want to be better runners. Good for you. Fourth question. Okay, this time you actually have to pick the right answer from a group of images. We're going to put a group of images on the, on the screen. This one's to honor our sponsor, Certified Piedmontese. Which one of the images is a ribeye steak? Come on, which one's a ribeye? If you get this wrong, oh my gosh, I guess they're killing it. Who the heck is voting for the salmon? What's going on there? Or the trout or whatever that is. You're right, that's that's the ribeye. We're from the Midwest. I know, the Midwest, but all right, four percent with fish. Okay, this is the last question. Would you rather not be allowed? to display your finisher medal after the race or not to be able to tell anyone that you finished an Ironman. 
Are you kidding me? With the egos out here, you throw the metal in the garbage. Y'all know when you go to a party, if you want to find out if there's an Iron Man in the room, just wait, they'll come up and tell you. Okay, what was it? Oh, it's, yeah, not, not be able to show off your medal. Yeah, you're lying, I know you are. All right, that's the results of that, that's pretty good. So I got a pair of sunglasses to give away. This is, all you veterans out there that have done an Ironman, how many have done it in a very, like, hot race, like a, like a, oh my gosh, hot race? Okay, you have. Was that race over 100 degrees? Yeah, with, with Coeur d'Alene, with, yeah. With Malaysia. Penticton. Malaysia. All right, in that hot race, which one of you had a PR, your best race? You did? Well, I gave you a fist pump at the finish line. Dude, that means I'm down there at 16 hours. What are you talking about? Was that your PR? Was that your best race? All right, you get a pair of sunglasses. Good for you. I love that. Right in the back, sitting in the middle. We got goggles to give away? How am I going to give goggles away? Oh, I know. In the morning in transition, I always have athletes come up to me and go, Mike, I forgot my goggles. Okay. Does anybody have goggles out there? And all of a sudden, I got 10 pair hanging from me. But you're all very good. How many have given up their goggles at a swim start or their extra pair to an athlete? Who's done that? Sandy, you've done that? Sandy, we're 72 years old. You get another pair of goggles. There you go. <laughs> Australia? Oh, in Austria, okay. I got a backpack to give away. I, I, this is easy. Galen, I'm going to give you a backpack. How's that? Right there. Come on, Galen. Get your backpack. You're out there with an international crowd. We have 30 countries represented. Besides the U.S., the top five countries. Who's the, who's the top besides U.S.? Where? Canada. You're right. And then after Canada is... Uh, you're great, Mike. You got Canada listed twice. Jeez, oh man, I'm getting old. Oh, all right. After Canada is Chile. How great is that? Then after Chile is UK, United Kingdom, Great Britain. And then rounding out that top five after the US, the two of them. Mexico and Brasilia, Brazil. All right, welcome to everybody. Welcome. Obviously, the number one state is what? Iowa. Uh, I thought you were going to say Wisconsin, just to crank me. All right, <laughs> Iowa, 269 and from Iowa. The next is Illinois, 131. The next is where I live? California, California. yeah. Uh, the next after that is Texas has 78. Minnesota has uh, 72. And... Oh yeah, I do have something to give away. We have, of the 47 states that are represented, there's one from Maine, Vermont, West Virginia, and Alaska. One each. Is the Alaska participant here? No. Is the West Virginia participant here? No. Is the Vermont participant here? One. How about Maine? All right, all right, I got another one. Montana, who's here from Montana? Montana, there's, there's two of you, do you know the other one? Oh, you registered twice, okay. 
They want, oh yeah, Lindsay, the pro, Lindsay from Montana, that's right. Well, you got a prize. They made me do this, but uh, after selling all the books today, I had one left, so they grabbed it. So you get a, you have my book? You have it already? I told you. <laughs> well, here, buy another one. I'll sell it to you. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give this to Lindsay. Although I already sent her. She's already got one. Who doesn't have my book? You were the first one to raise your hand. You got it in the white shirt. Come back afterwards and I'll sign it for you. By the way, we've got 11 birthdays on race day. That will, any birthdays out there? That will come up on the screen, so I'll be able to uh, say happy birthday to you. And I always call it out. The oldest birthday on race day is 55-year-old Carolyn Zakharuski. So Carolyn's our oldest birthday on race day. And then when we did all the age groups, I didn't do these people. The number that's in my head and won't leave my head all race day long is 284. There are 284 first-timers out there. Stand up, first-timers! Yeah! You're gonna have a great time out there on that three-mile swim, the 120-mile ride, and the 30-mile run. They're going, what do you say? Go to the athlete meeting. <laughs> you first timers, I'll be able to, it comes up on the screen, I'll be able to call you in for the first time in your life, and you'll be an Iron Man for the rest of your life. Congratulations for getting here. All right, everyone is racing. This is only for the people racing. I'm gonna have you stand up, because we're gonna play a game. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna play a game called Swim, Bike, Run. It's similar to rock, paper, scissors, okay? <laughs> So on the oh Jesus. So on the screen, right now I'm gonna have you all stand up that you're doing the race and give me any one of the three poses you want. Okay. You're gonna do it. Alright. Get in the pose. What pose? Any one of them. There's bike, there's swim, there's run, there's... Okay, now, an image is going to come on the screen. If you're wrong with what you're showing, you got to sit down. Okay, go. Oh, it's a bike. Bike, stay in. Stay up. Bike, stay up. Oh, look how many bikes have. Okay, on three, pick a new one. Keep the bike the same, run or swim. One, two, three. Oh, so many of them went to the run. Went to the bike again, sit down. Where's our riders? Okay, you guys. Yeah, raise your hand if you're still in so I can see you. There you go. Okay, why don't I bring you right up front? Come on, real quick, come on. Come on. You're gonna do the same thing, face the audience. I don't wanna look at you, I'm gonna see you all day Sunday. On three, you're gonna pick whether or not you wanna be a swim, bike, or run. You know the pose, ready? One, two, three, pick. It is a swimmer. I got, I only got one swimmer. You won. Oh my gosh, by the way, guess what the prize was? I didn't even say this at the beginning. No, you get a new bike. Don't push it. You get an entry into any Iron Man next year in North America. You know what? His response is the same as all you guys. Oh my God, I gotta keep training.
It's amazing when I have the opportunity to see dreams come true right before our very eyes. Whether you're doing your 180 some Ironman or whether you're doing your first. Everyone's unique and everyone's different. So check this out because this is a place where dreams come true. On Sunday, don't surprise yourself. Those dreams are yours, your family loves you, your friends love you, and you love you. And if the world was encapsulated with what we have right here in this park, it'd be a much better place to live. I cannot wait to call you an Iron Man. So just get your butt to the finish line any way you can, and we'll welcome you home. Cannot wait to see you Sunday morning bright and early. Good luck, everybody. Sleep well. And for the last thing, we still got more prizes. Look under your seat. If you got a tag there, take it over there. You get another prize. <laughs> Look under your seat. Sacramento. Wait, wait, wait. There you go. Take it right over.